So, the new trailer for Game of Thrones Season 6 has just released, and a lot of you guys messaged me on Facebook and Twitter to let me know. I thank you for that, because I do rely on your messages to alert me to this stuff. Before I begin, a couple of things. First, I really did enjoy this trailer. I thought it was friggin' awesome. I liked the tone, I liked what we saw, and I think it was much better than the first trailer we got. Second, for some reason, HBO has made it a habit of releasing their new trailers in 720p. So if the picture quality looks bad, it's not on my end. For those of you wondering why that matters, well, it's mainly because if the resolution was higher, we could catch a few more details in some of these scenes. One example would be how some of you spotted Jon Snow in the first trailer on horseback. It was blurry, so all we really saw was a man with long hair. But if it was in higher resolution, we could have seen a bit more detail to confirm or deny that it was him. It does make a bit of difference. And last, a couple of you have been wondering when I'm going to dish out my next GOT history video, and to that I say soon. And who will it be on? I'll leave the answer to that on my Facebook page. It's an early sketch, but so far I think it looks sexy. Now with all that out of the way, let's get to it. The first scene we get is showing us what's going on outside the room where Davos is protecting Jon's body. It seems that the traitors at Castle Black aren't just a handful of men, but likely almost all of them. We can see here that they have crossbows aimed directly at the door, just in case one of Jon's supporters runs out to attack. If you saw my previous breakdown video of the small scene we got of the traitors trying to break down the door, then you know I subscribe to the theory that Ramsay ordered Jon Snow's death because Sansa escaped, and in his mind, the only place she could possibly go to is Castle Black with her brother. I believe Ramsay threatened to destroy the Watch if they do not kill Jon and hand over his body as proof. Some of you asked, and why didn't they just stab him? instead of, you know, leaving him to die. Well, for dramatic effect, I assume. That way the camera can focus in on him. That and possibly to let him bleed out, and yes, I realize it would have been easier just to, you know, cut his throat, but what are you gonna do? Next, we get Tormund in a voiceover him saying he thought Jon Snow would lead them through the Long Night. For those of you who don't know, the Long Night is an event that happened when the White Walkers originally invaded the continent and they brought with them a night that never ended. I do like that Tormund has put a lot of his faith on Jon as a man, but it seems like he's talking to Davos or maybe someone else about his death, which means Tormund eventually finds out about it. Some of the comment section says that maybe Ed runs off to find the Wadlings to bring them back to help, and that makes sense. It's probably why Winwin breaks down the door to cast of black to, you know, help get Jon's body. Next up, we get a glimpse of Tyrion ruling Marine in Danny's place. It looks like some of the masters are asking him if he likes to play games and calls him a little man. We expected that when Tyrion stayed behind, he would encounter some type of bullshit like this, and it holds true. Not only does he have to deal with the harpies, but it also looks like a new red woman has come. I assume she was hoping to have an audience with the Dragon Queen. The reason I know that she is a follower of the Lord of Light is because she has that devious smile in the clothes Melisandre usually wears. The only thing missing is the overwhelming amount of nudity. Next, we get Jamie about to kick some ass with the High Sparrow asking him if he would spill blood in the holy place, to which Jamie says that the gods spill more blood than anybody. Definitely a line I expect some atheists to use in the future. We also get a glimpse of Drogon flying over the Dothraki horde, and in this one here, I was a bit shocked. Amelia Clark is finally gonna show some skin? But that's impossible. She has it in her contract to never ever show titty. Maybe now she has to ever since Terminator Genesis bombed at the box office. I would love it if that's how, like, the negotiations turned out. Listen, Miss Clark, normally we would agree for you not to be nude, but since your movie bombed, we expect you to at least show a nipple or two and one ass cheek. Now in this trailer, we do get a bit more of Arya, who is still blind. The Faceless Men have agreed to give her another chance, but it's the only one she'll get. I expect that by the end of the season, she'll be one of their best recruits, and maybe by Season 7, she'll finally be sent out on her first mission. In the books, she's still going through training, and in the sneak peek chapter from Book 6 that George gave us last year, she's still in Bravos. I assume that she'll be there until the very last season, or until the very last book. Over here, we have Sansa looking amazing as always, and she's finally found refuge. I expect that the showrunners have enjoyed torturing her by pairing her up with Ramsay, would continue to do so by putting her in dangerous situations. Judging by the clothes she's wearing, she has met up with Stark supporters, which is good, and hopefully we'll see more of her kicking ass this time around. I can't get a good look of who she's with, but it does seem like she's with some allies, and not near any crazy psychos like in the previous situations. I mean, I feel bad for her because of how much she's had to endure. The only way it could get any worse for her if she ended up at a Donald Trump rally. Next, we have a surprise appearance of Walder Frey. I'll say this now, I'm really starting to like this season, mainly because we're getting almost everybody back that we've seen before, and we'll be able to catch up with them too. If you pause at the right time, you can see some Lannister soldiers in the feast. Once again, because it's not higher res, you can't make out Jaime in there, but I think that's him right there. 
I'm excited to see what Walder Frey will be doing, but for those of you wondering why Jamie is back at the Riverlands, it's probably because Cersei sent him to root out the last of the Stark Loyalists. I've heard that they're bringing back the Blackfish too, who is held up at Riverrun. I'm surprised the showrunners are going to send Jamie to the Riverlands and keep with the books, and if Jamie is there, then that means we may get Lady Stoneheart. Why? Well, the next picture pretty much tells me there is a possibility. You see, here it looks like Brienne and Podrick are back in the Riverlands. Now, I don't want to spoil the books for anybody, but let's just say, now that Brienne is here and so is Jaime, there is a strong possibility that they will be adapting that part as well. I honestly thought that when Jaime went south and Brienne went north that they would never meet up again, but it seems like a definite possibility now. Judging by the House Tully banner, it looks like she's in Riverrun, the House Tully castle. I assume she's either there after Jaime takes it over, or maybe she's there to converse with the Blackfish. The soldiers in the back don't have the Lannister helmets, so it's possible that the Blackfish still holds Riverrun and she's there to talk to him. Also, before I move on, we get a nice fake out of someone choking Padre, but it just looks like Bronn is messing with him. If you pause at the right time, you can see Bronn's hair. Throughout the trailer, we get a glimpse of scenes that were in the first one, but with a bit more to them. A better look at Jorah and how far the grayscale has gotten. A better look at Yara, who is waiting the arrival of her uncle, Euron. Either Jaime or the Zombie Mountain killing one of the Sparrows. A better look at Jaime with the Tyrell soldiers, the Night's King and his horsemen of the Apocalypse, and some fighting between a Stark soldier and the Targaryen Kingsguard. Clearly a vision that Bran is having. Some of you have questioned whether or not if that is a Targaryen Kingsguard, but it looks like the armor we've seen from the current Kingsguard, but with the Targaryen symbol. It was changed to show their allegiance to the Baratheons, but here in this vision, they're fighting the one still loyal to the Mad King. And it also looks like the Three-Eyed Raven is able to enter Bran's vision like Jojen was able to do. Max von Sydow is a great actor, and hopefully they give him more to do than they did in Star Wars Episode Seven. And before we close out, I wanted to touch on Davos and the great battle in the north between the Wildlings and the Boltons. In this scene, we can see Davos with some Stark soldiers in the background. I assume Davos will start going around to try and personally get the support of the Northern Lords, just like he did for Stannis. In this scene here, Davos is trying to convince someone of the coming threat of the White Walkers, and they need to stand together. You can see the banners in the back, and it looks like the sigil of either House Mormont or possibly House Reed. Here we get the typical House Bolton threat with the Burning Cross, possibly prisoners of Stannis Baratheon's army being burned alive to demoralize their enemies. And here, if you pause at the correct time, you can see Tormund running into battle with one of the northern houses, House Kerwin. You can see their house sigil right down here, which is a battle axe. In this one where the Boltons have their shields up, you can make out House Hornwood as well. And last, we have Tyrion telling Varys and Missandei that dragons don't do well in captivity. How does he know that? because he's an intelligent alcoholic, like so many of us claim to be. The trailer does a nice job of faking us out, but I highly doubt they'll kill off Tyrion through Dragonfire. Once again, I believe that the other slave cities will rise up and take this opportunity to invade Marine while the Sons of the Harpies are causing trouble. Tyrion is probably trying to convince them to release the dragons if they are to survive the siege, so he's either there to release them or get a closer look. But yeah, that was a pretty good trailer. Like I said, I enjoyed it. It gave us a lot to look forward to, and I would say this is one of the best GOT trailers I've seen in a while. My favorite having to be the Season 4 trailer, Cities Lie in Dust. I really like that one too. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, click the subscribe and like buttons, let me know in the comments if I missed something from the trailer, and be sure to check out my previous trailer breakdown for that Davos scene and the Rogue One trailer breakdown. Like us on Facebook and follow me on Twitter for any updates on future videos. All the links are in the description. Now I'll see you guys next time. Baba Booey.